Hey guys, real quick test video here for you today. In a previous video, I reviewed the Microtech CRS504-4XQ-IN network switch. It's a 100 gig ethernet switch. In that video, I had used iPerf3 to do some performance and speed testing. Now I knew that iPerf3 was not multi-threaded and that's why I had run multiple parallel processes to try to achieve the full 100 gig bandwidth. Um, however, what I didn't know was that iPerf version 2 was multi-threaded. So it turns out iPerf3 was a complete rewrite and it sounds like for a specific purpose. Um, so we're going to redo our testing here with iPerf2. And I was able to hit pretty much the full speed on this switch using iPerf2, which is pretty exciting. And I learned this bit of information from a comment that one of my viewers had left. However, for some reason that comment has been deleted. It just seems to have disappeared. Um, so thank you to whoever the person was that let me know this. And prior to this, I was trying to do some performance tuning on both the operating system and the switch. I had a number of kernel parameters I was changing that I had found on Google. You know, I had set the MTU values pretty high. So the purpose of this video is simply to show you what I found. So the server on the left is the Dell R730. This is going to be our client computer. Uh, the server on the right is the Supermicro, and this will be our server. So I'll show you here that I removed everything from the kernel parameters, cat, etc, sys, ctl, .conf. Do this on both servers, and you can see there are some settings in there that I had been testing with, but they are all commented out per the hash sign. Uh, so on the Supermicro, we'll start the iperf server, iperf-s. On the left, we're going to do iperf-c. 192.168.0.125-t, do a five second test. I'm not gonna add any other parameters to start with. And that brings back a bandwidth of 31.2 gigabits per second. So now we'll do another test here. We'll add dash P of five, that's five parallel connections in five threads. And pay attention to the uh, CPU graphs here at H top. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. I don't really see any of the cores on either side 100% utilized, which is a good sign. And that came back with a bandwidth of 94.1 gigabits per second. And there's no tuning that's needed. That's the best part is there's no, no kernel parameters to change, no frame sizes, nothing like that. Now, of course, if you're trying to run a single file copy and you wanna see that bandwidth over a single file copy, that's when that'll play a part in maximizing your bandwidth. However, for a server, you're probably going to see many, many transfers going at once. You're not going to see one transfer that you want to see 100 gigabits on. Um, so I do think this is a fair assessment and a fair test of the performance of both uh, the network card, the cabling, and the Microtik switch. Now the window I have behind the putty terminals here is the graph from the Microtik switch on one of the 100 gig interfaces. Um, so I'm going to run a more lengthy test. I'm going to do a 60 second test and we can just see what kind of bandwidth we're hitting on this graph as reported by the switch. So down here we can see we're pretty much at 100 gigabits per second transmit. It keeps going above and below 100 gigs. And look at this receive. This is all the overhead. It's receiving 100 megabits per second overhead. And you can see our graph here is pretty much right at the 100 gigabits per second line. Um, so it is holding that transfer rate pretty well. So look at that, very, very cool. This is a fast switch. Interestingly, that test came back at 87.4 gigabits. It wasn't in the 90s like the previous test. And just for some fun here, our smallest server has 36 cores. So let's do a slash P of 36 connections and see what that does. I'm not expecting it to be any faster by any means. If anything, it's probably gonna be slower, but uh, all right, and it came back with 91.1 gigabits. That's not as slow as I thought it'd be. I thought we would take some penalty for sure having that many connections. Uh, but on second guess, that's exactly what servers are designed for. So um, yeah, I hope you found these tests interesting. If you did, please hit that like button before you go. Any questions or comments, you can always leave those as well. And thanks for watching.